Hey everyone, it's Joel here with some quick notes for before we begin. As of today, Thursday, November 10th, 2022, Waymo is launching fully publicly their Waymo One taxi service in downtown Phoenix, which means anyone can download the app and take the iPaces for a spin. These are the fully rider-only iPaces, no safety driver, so the service area is a little bit different than what you might have seen, uh, but you'll see it in the video. And so as part of that, on Monday they invited me out to Phoenix to be customer number one. Uh, for that public ride hailing experience, which was really, really cool. And I'd like to thank everyone who was uh, involved in making that happen behind the scenes. This experience will be a short video series, as I also got to take a tour of their uh, one of their depots, and I also got to sit down with a product manager and have a chat for about half an hour. Uh, so those will be parts two and three in, uh, in this series. An important thing to note is that no money exchange hands for this experience, but I was provided a free ride coupon and I was also given full access to the uh, service area in my own app so I could choose any destination for the trip. We agreed beforehand that everything that I film in the car was fair game to publish. So as always, this will be exactly like a normal video. 1x speed, no cuts, no funny business. Uh, that's my personal policy. And as always, look down in the description for uh, timestamps for any special events that happen during this ride so you can just kind of skip around and see what uh, interests you. And so without further ado, enjoy the show. Started again, right? Are you moving? Uh, I have not yet started the trip, so uh, yeah, we're just I'm just setting up here, and then we'll be ready to go in a, in just a second. Okay. Um. Okay. I'll go ahead. I'll stick. Go ahead and stay on the line. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. We're out of here. Sit on. Yep. Heading okay. to the yard milkshake bar. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. For any questions, press the call support right. button to speak with a rider support agent. How do you get this? I will. Uh, oh, maybe I'll put this on my seatbelt. How about that? Yeah. Okay. That's a good angle. I'll just have to tilt it, but that should be okay. Your old friend Adobe Premier. Yes, indeed. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, I'm just gonna turn this down for the GoPro. And then, we're good to go. Oh my Here's where I put mine. Alright. Uh, is it on? It's on my seatbelt. Uh oh. It was getting cold. Oh, that's cool. It seems fine, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, is a uh, blue light on um, there? Um, no. I'll hit the power button. Here. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Ready. Alright. Looks like we are, uh, doing well here, so. Appreciate the call. Okay, so as soon as you're ready to go and you've got the start button, you'll the car should be on its way. Yep. Oh, yeah. wait a minute, I gotta do this. And... Okay, that should take care of it. Should be good to go. Alright, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Is there anything else I can help you with today? I think that about, that's about it. All right, well, thank you, and you have a great ride. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Right, okay, on that note, uh, extended intro. Uh, welcome to downtown Phoenix, everybody. <laughs> I'm here uh, with. You want my to introduce name's, yourself? Yeah, my name's Reed. I'm a software engineer on the Waymo One service, specifically. That's um, software engineer at Waymo. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice to be here with you. Yeah. Glad we uh, got you in the car. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, feels 
should, right off the bat, it feels very similar. Uh, driving to the Pacificas. I mean, it has been two months since my last Pacifica ride, but I was in the, in the fourth gen hardware, but it's good to be in the fifth gen, uh, or driver even, because I heard it was, there's a lot of changes. Uh, it's definitely been some from, changes, yep. Yeah, um, but yeah, definitely some uh, yeah, interesting differences. It doesn't look like my GPS is having a good time over there, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think my my okay my, my perfect master plan was to have like a g-force indicator and all kinds of stuff but it's mm -hmm. it just didn't get the gps signal so <laughs> well uh you'll just have to try again next time yeah next time uh which is cool because am i am i gonna say it this is coming out after thursday right <laughs> uh lima one is launching publicly in downtown phoenix yep so that was really fast uh well, it feels like to me, like the first announcement of driving was in May and then public launch is November. Like, how, how did you guys pull that off? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, we've been doing it for a long time now um, in general. And we have a lot of people working really hard, a lot of great ops people in Phoenix area. Um, and we already had all the operations from Running and Chandler. So we're mm -hmm. just sort of expanding on what we have already. Um, but yeah, you know, the car is just driving really, really well. Um, you know, we've been driving for quite a while in San Francisco, um, mm -hmm. longer than here in downtown Phoenix, but, um, yeah. you know, the performance, we're really happy with the performance in San Francisco and we brought the car here. Um, same software, same hardware, exact wow. same stack. And we're very happy with the performance here as well, which I think is why you see that, yeah. uh, that timeline. Yeah. That, that's incredible. I was, I, I was wondering a lot about, um, when you bring the fifth generation driver to different cities like what kind of localization changes are made either like minor or major but um yeah so you're saying it's, it's pretty similar if not the same right. yep it's pretty right. much the same thing um you know i think there's some i some behavior people may um <laughs> may not like what i have to say i don't know actually what the difference is in terms of the road rules in right. phoenix like you know, in some places you can't turn right on red, other places you can't. That's an example. I don't know what the differences are here. So obviously there's some of those types right. of differences, but in terms of the actual driving software and, and the software running on the car and the hardware, it's all the same. That's incredible. Yep. Cool. I, every time I drive past one of these, like on the freeway or just in, in Phoenix or somewhere, I, I'm really amazed at all the, you guys have you've got the function and you've got the form too because this thing looks really nice yeah <laughs> so yeah it does look good um you know the fourth gen platform it uh, when it came out i was like man this thing looks so cool so futuristic um, yeah. and now that i've been seeing the jlrs around and the fifth gen on top like it it just looks really slick and the industrial <laughs> yeah. design is so good i've got to say i agree it is it is pretty incredible it's nice and i personally i really like the led dome i don't yeah. know if you noticed that when you're getting picked up but uh I think that's yeah. a great touch. I looked at, um, there was an article where one of these was on the, on a show floor for a couple of days and some people went around and like looked at the sensors and like, oh, there's the dome, there's like just uh, columns of LED, R presumably RGB LEDs just like spin in a circle and it knows exactly how fast it is so it can make this nice little... Exactly, persistence yeah. of vision. Persistence of vision. Yep. Yeah, I think there's three vertical strips of LEDs in there. Cool. And, uh, yeah, you know, you just sort of align the RPM with the frame rate that you want and uh, yeah. Yeah, it uh, doesn't quite work with cameras as well as you'd hope, but. Uh, it is a little funky. Yeah. yeah, I've noticed on my camera, if I adjust the exposure a little bit um, to like overexpose, for example, yeah. then you can get a little bit more of that persistence of vision. Um, but yeah, that I totally agree. I've, take, I've tried to take <laughs> pictures to show it off to people. And I'm like, it just, you have to see it in real life. Um, but it does look pretty good in real life. Yeah. I. Um, I've been, there's been a couple of promo videos Waymo published on YouTube and I, I couldn't help but notice like that it, it looks perfect you know so I'm like well obviously <laughs> they, they dialed that in or maybe they added it in later but uh, yeah this is I have barely even noticing the driving here and it's really nice and smooth lots of traffic around somebody just darted out of a parking garage it's all nice in real time yeah, this is really, really incredible. Um, man. Oh, that's right. Almost to your drop off. I should start Check adding my extra spots. Yeah, I'm, 
I should probably screen record as well. Uh, I prepared that. No, go away, add. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. So, as you can see here, this is the downtown Phoenix uh, rider only service area. You can tell it's a little bit different than the one that was announced uh, back in May. Uh, notably, it stops um, east, or just a little bit west, rather, of the 51 you know, on Thomas Road where it starts to get real crazy. Um, I, I was kind of wondering if we could talk about what, what kind of factors play into uh, when you choose the difference between like a general service area and kind of like a rider only and then how does that like change over time? Um, You're here. Totally. Please make sure yeah. it's clear before exiting. <laughs> um, I think there's a lot of stuff that goes into choosing the service area. We have a pretty, um, a pretty complete sur um, um, safety framework mm -hmm. um, that we use to sort of uh, helps decide like what we're going to do next and what our operational domain is and um, a lot of stuff about the service and so um, I think in line with the safety framework and what the car is capable of today you know we're always updating the software we're always improving um, our operational domain right. and making the car a better driver um, and I think at all of those things kind of combine and then there's also everything on the operational side right we're running a service we want to have good ETAs mm -hmm. um, you know it's it's not really great if you have a 40 minute ETA no one's going to use that as a service and, and we are trying to build an honest to God service here um, <laughs> yeah so I think all of those factors sort of combine in into deciding you know how big of the service area do we want to have at any given moment um, you know where where should the borders be and um, but I think you'll see, you know, over the next year that it'll expand and, and get yeah. bigger. Yeah. That's because, um, notably, when uh, Waymo One launched, and or rather, even like the early rider program in Chandler, was it went all the way out to McQueen Road East, and then when uh, you guys went away for COVID, yep. and then when you came back, it was a little bit different, and I couldn't help but notice these perfect lines that followed railroad tracks at a half mile distance. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I've always wanted to ask about that, but I didn't know if it was kind of pushing it uh, too long. Is there uh, particular challenges presented by uh, like railroad tracks that are being worked on, or is that just like a coincidence that, or um, I don't know even, honestly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, you know, I think even with human drivers, there's a lot of issues with the railroad and railroad crossings. You know, it's a dangerous spot to be. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I didn't have anything to do with how those lines were drawn. Um, I'm not sure if they had to do with the railroad crossing or not. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they are there. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. That's, it's always been a little interesting to me because I, um, I received a map earlier of what, of what the service area would look like. And then when I got access to it, I couldn't help but notice that the little railroad tracks part here was chopped off. <laughs> so the chin there. It was, um... But yeah, I don't know. So it's some, yeah. uh, some that's. I will say right us. now, there's a lot of construction um, in downtown Phoenix. Yes. And um, so our sort of services, where we're able to offer, you know, rides to is evolving due to that. Mm -hmm. You know, every day, and and you've seen, you know, um, construction like springs up Almost pretty much daily, off. and then goes Check away the daily. App for walking yeah. directions. Um, very dynamic. Uh, so I think, I believe, you know, I, at some point we will expand down south more. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's due to construction right now that we're not. Okay. Yeah. So that, yeah, um, as far as I know, the Chandler service area was very, very, um, like it was set once and then I never saw it change. So it's very interesting to see, it. I mean, maybe it did change in some ways, but. It, I mean, um, it did evolve a lot back 2018, 2019. That was before my time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think, were you in the early writer program? I got in like July 2019 so I missed like the first community meetup and stuff got um, it. but got uh, it. yeah so I got in like right before yeah so in um, early rider program I think it it morphed a lot um, during that here. time please make sure it's clear um, before exiting you want to go? oh no sorry I'm just, just gonna checking. I'm just gonna uh, go. retrieve my phone off the sure, dash because sure, sure. it seems like a, a failed endeavor sure uh, <clears throat> Mind me, 360 camera. Okay. Nice. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Did I drop my case on that? I did. Sorry, um, folks. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think during the early router program, the um, the service area in Chandler evolved quite a bit. It got smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger. Um, and then once we launched the rider only um, in 2019, that had a little bit of a smaller area. Right. Just um, by nature of the ODD of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think, yeah, it was pretty fairly static during that time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, range. Oh, yes. That's the what just happened there is what I call the close but don't touch uh, thing where it gets like a lot closer to a parked car than I would have, but of course it has all the sensors and stuff. So. The Waymo uh, driver <laughs> is very aware of its own body size. Yes. I have been <laughs> constantly impressed. You know, I ride a lot. We call it fish fooding. I, I fish food a lot in San Francisco. Oh, um, it's not like dog fooding at Google? It's like dog fooding. A yeah. little different? A little fish in the sea. Yeah. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm actually not sure the entomology of that one. Oh, um, interesting. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do ride there and I'm constantly impressed in little narrow alleyways and stuff, you know, the car maneuvering around people. Wow. It's, and Like that. Like, um, yeah, like that. <laughs> but also just getting very close to parked cars. Um, it, it just knows how large it is. And it yeah. knows exactly where the cars are, which is the other thing, you know. With a LiDAR, you can really tell how far away something is. Right. Yeah, it really brings that extra um, oomph to safety and stuff. I don't know. I'm, I, I want to go into this someday. I'm at the midway through my university journey here, but so I'm like super hobbyist level on my like knowledge and stuff I pick up on. But yeah, this is really really cool. So, are um, you computer science major? Uh, yeah, pr pretty much in the area like computer engineering. Okay. Know, but yeah. So I did see the internships uh, thing go out today uh, that they posted. Uh, they said, oh, summer internships are open, apply here. So I was like, oh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, um, come apply. But, yeah, come yeah. up here, Waymo. Well, uh, we'll see. Uh, I have some other plans that I have to do in, like, summer, but, uh, so I might be going somewhere else, but that does look like a really cool opportunity. Um, let's see, make sure everything's good here. Yeah, I'm just, uh, consistently impressed. I mean, yeah, we never get this level of very dense, um, traffic and pedestrian stuff around Chandler. It's, it's uh, the most dense thing I can usually get is the Costco parking lot. <laughs> so uh, yes, I've actually been in the Costco parking lot in yeah, Chandler. Fun. It's fun. It's, uh, yeah. it's an experience. Um, and then even then Costco, out of their infinite wisdom, put up a bunch of bollards, like concrete bollards, so now you can't even do that's the, even old, harder. the old demo yeah, that you used to be able to do, but you know, that's actually safer for people, so. yeah. What yeah. the heck? It's a, you know? it's a pretty chaotic parking lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the fifth gen platform is much better at you know big congested areas, lots mm -hmm. of people around, um, lots of cars. Um, it's also a little bit more assertive. I think there's times when you'd see the fourth gen platform sort of you know loitering and waiting for someone to go when it wasn't quite sure. Um, yeah. And you see what the fifth gen, uh, just a much better idea of how to drive with people. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's kind of the big. That's like the big challenge, right? Is how do you drive like socially? You yeah. Know, how do you communicate with other drivers and you know people wait at the curb and when are they going to cross? Right. Um, it's like then there's like the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Exactly. And yep. all sorts of stuff to deal with there. So it's oh, I mean, those are railroad tracks. So hey, we did it. We did. Uh, yep. <laughs> okay, I guess I missed the. There, there we go. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's interesting. I don't, I don't even know if I've been over down here before, so this is new in a couple of ways. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty nice town. Honestly. Yeah. I've been here a few times for work, and I enjoy it. Yeah. That's, um, let's see. I should probably start adding my next slide. I got, like, so distracted. <laughs> uh, do Oh man, yeah. I noticed um, that the the rider screen there is in like a more it's more of like a white mode, light light mode thing. And then uh, I guess I saw in somebody's video that after sunset it goes turns to dark, like the Pacificas. So I'm like, yep. There's a lot of lot of little uh, UI differences and all sorts of stuff. I'm like, I'm like, I wonder what what plays into that. Um, 
it's the as a as a, is the fourth gen platform pretty much just like let's just run it out until we can replace everything or is there still I think we're pretty happy with the fourth gen how it's running um mm. I mean you've seen you know you've Lots been you've been in it a lot of times <laughs> yeah. and you can see you know it's it's it works pretty well um, it does so I think we're pretty happy with it in terms of the fifth gen UI um you know, it's a different screen placement. It's down low. It's mm -hmm. not right in front of you. There's also two screens, right. one in front well. and one behind with us. Um, so, and the both of those screens, the front one and back one are a different aspect ratio. And the screens are also a different aspect ratio than the fourth gen. Um, right. So there's a lot Almost of lot that's gotta Don't go into it, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff that goes into planning the UX and, um, you know, one of the most important things I think terms of building trust for the car um, and making people comfortable in the car building trust is making sure you can see what the car is thinking and yeah and understand that it uh, you know it has everything under control that it sees everything around you and that it really is capable and and um, <laughs> and that it's aware of the surroundings I think yeah. that that's the most important thing that we can do to build trust while you're sitting in the car as a hobbyist rider I, I tend to agree with that um, I really really like that screen especially with all the pedestrians moving around and you can dis distinguish between parked cars and moving cars and there's like the is that the I guess that's technically the path planner and you can see the I'm like just barely picking up on the terminology here <laughs> but um, <laughs> yep I don't want to misuse it either because that would look silly um, but yeah it's a, it is really cool I get I'm <laughs> yeah so there used to be a thing where uh, like announcements would go up as like a banner on top and then mm -hmm. now they cover the whole screen mm -hmm. which I find annoying but I bet th there's a lot that went into that and there's good reasons so I'm like well you know oh well but because <laughs> I I like I like to see that screen I really want to know what the car's thinking yeah um, but, yeah I but, think there's you, it's a delicate balance between like overwhelming people right um, yeah. and and making sure they're just able to focus on what's most important at the moment Mm. Um, you know, and generally we don't want to interrupt your ride. We don't want to interrupt the experience unless it's, you know, pretty important. So mm -hmm. we kind of will pop the full the full like, screen hey, get notification. Your, get your bags. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, but also, this screen is physically smaller than the one in the Pacifica. That's true. You know, yeah. so it's you don't want to cram too much stuff on there. Yeah. It's. Um, yeah, I've had to. Um, so I, I volunteer at like a local performing arts center, and so they have some outdoor digital signage. And have two of them are different aspect ratios and yeah. really they have even like slight differences in aspect ratio can be super frustrating for like trying to design something that works on both at the same time yeah so i i have a little bit of a of a sympathy i have some sympathy there for the <laughs> you know people trying to make it work so that that was pretty cool uh, you're so here let's go please make sure it's and clear even that just animation it goes you know, like swoops over the That's really cool. Um, sunshine. Okay. 32. I've always wanted to know what the light rail looks like on the on the screen. So here we are. Uh, that is really cool. Um, cause yeah, when the, before the rider only service area in Chandler, the, you know, when it went across the tracks, I would, I would always ask him like, wait, what is, what do, what do trains look like mm -hmm. on the thing? Like, cause yep. usually the, it would show a little RXR on the screen mm -hmm. and say, Hey, we're going, we're going over a road crossing now. Um, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> paralleling the light rail and uh, okay. Yeah, these people are way close on the curb there. That's uh, oh yeah. It was, uh, yeah, un unpredict being unpredictable makes it more tough, but I'd, I'd say in the grand scheme of things, that was a pretty smooth handling of the situation. Um, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, there we go. I mean, I know you've seen in your Stop videos, um, the fourth gen platform, it can be a little bit robotic. You know, mm -hmm. it, it drives very well, it feels safe, but there are times when you're like, oh, there's a robot driving. You know, you can tell. Yeah, um, it, especially um, sometimes braking uh, behavior. There's a very, there's a very uh, specific sound that the Pacifica will make, like a half second before it 
a brake slam, but you know, the tense fret. Uh, <laughs> but they, that's very rare. Uh, so, I'm, but I'm like, I do know what it, like, what to expect. Yeah. Out there, but usually it's not, it's not too bad. Just, I don't think I've even seen that that many that were that bad and usually they're always for like somebody just ran out in front or somebody pulled out in front absolutely so it's yeah. it's it's well deserved there, yeah but i've been riding in san francisco and the car has braked very suddenly and i've thought to myself why did it do that i shouldn't have braked there yeah. and then you'll see like someone on a scooter go by oh you know and yeah. it's the kind of thing where it's like i literally would have missed that mm -hmm. had i been driving yeah that was yeah. It's, it's when it, when it can see better than you then that's it's, uh, it's pretty amazing yeah yeah I, i'm just continually impressed here yeah it's really really awesome um yeah and i, I like to for uh you know recording reasons i like this this uh ceiling so that's <laughs> yeah it's lot, a little easier to attach to there's a lot to like here because yeah. um, one of my main concerns when i was getting ready was like is there still a plastic shield mm -hmm. that i can put my gopro mm -hmm. on and they're like no no <laughs> so I, I had to think creatively there and uh, Anyway, that was that was fun. Uh, three, three, two, one. Oh. Okay. I am noticing as I go ahead and add stops. Stop added. Uh, it seems like the pickup and drop off spots are a little more selective. Although, I have been noticing, you know, uh, whereas Chandler is full of neighborhoods and parking lots, so you can pretty much park anywhere. There's a lot of not that here. It's very, yep. it's very you yep. don't want to stop. Or, I, I've heard in interviews that a lot more than you would think goes into the selection of like available pickup it's and very drop -off. complex. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, we yeah. found like dense urban. So we look at San Francisco or downtown Phoenix as dense urban, whereas Chandler is a little, you know, less dense. Um, but we found dense urban, um, there's a lot more that needs to go into deciding a good pickup or drop off. Mm -hmm. Like you need to focus on not creating congestion in the downtown. Um, you don't want cars backing up behind you. You don't want an unsafe, unsafe situation because you're stuck in the road and people can't get where they need to go. Um, so yeah, we have a lot more heuristics and, and um, right. thinking that goes into the pickups and drop-offs. Um, but also, you know, Stop as added. I think as our our driver gets better, as mm -hmm. we improve the software and the capabilities, um, we'll see more more pickups and drop-offs become available, and um, and the pullovers get better too. Yeah. That yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, we had it was a little bit weird with like the bus stop there at the beginning, but it was hey, it, it did make it. Uh, so it was, <laughs> <laughs> yep. but lot, lots to. Yeah. Oh, I says I can't add any more stops to this trip. Um, uh -oh. Can I only have like six at a time or something? Uh, yeah. I'll I'll just see when we get there. Five drop offs at once. Okay. So with the next one, I'll just go ahead yeah. and add it. Yep. Um. See, so yeah, I was gonna go ahead and like I was gonna go up here and stuff, and then I realized that this is like just a bunch of houses and. <laughs> Not that much to see. I mean, there's some stuff, but I don't know. Maybe I'll uh, I'll see if I can do. I mean, I did say earlier that I was gonna do two fourth gen rides and then a special surprise, which you know this is the special surprise I've been hinting at. <laughs> uh, uh huh. And now now that I know that they're going public uh, very shortly, even it is uh, very tempting to want to go ahead and keep making more videos, but I, uh, I have my reasons. So, yeah, I'm still going on my service mission here. I was able to s just squeeze this in because it was pretty special, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll be able to keep making videos, unfortunately, but hopefully somebody else will, uh, maybe somebody else will pick it up. I don't know, because we'll see, but how many, it's like how many people are around here that like to make YouTube videos and also like <laughs> autonomous cars. So. Uh -huh. Surprisingly yeah. small number. <laughs> a fairly small club. I don't, yeah. you're, you're probably president, right? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, we are. I'm really excited to launch Downtown Service. Um, you know, it's been a long time in the making. We've been working yeah. on it pretty hard. So a lot of smart engineers working a lot, a lot of hours on that. Um, so I'm really excited. I hope people enjoy it. I hope it, it goes well for people. Um, but I know you've been really busy. You've said that mm -hmm. in your videos. Uh, 
yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to make time to take a couple more, you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. A couple more uh, rider-only rides, but yeah, we're here if you want it. I, uh, I'll, mm, yeah, now that I know, you know, it's like really, really, uh, really tempting. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see know, what I can fit. We but, run 24 uh, seven, so. Yeah, that's yeah, true. If you don't feel like sleeping one night after your work is done, <laughs> you can always <laughs> pop out here. That That's the fun thing is, uh, I used to have an overnight job and I would take my coworkers on demo rides because my, my job was in the service area. And so I would, um, yeah, we'd just go out. And th this was before multi-stops and I guess, you know, there's only, you only want to run one like one car or two cars at 3 a.m. or whatever because like who's <laughs> the trip demand's be... not super high. Yeah, yep. and it's like how many you don't want that many staff monitoring them and you don't want the so like I guess some some other soul was awake at 3 a.m. and grabbed the car after we got it so it was like really bad but trying to get back to the <laughs> place. But out there it somewhere. was like that's a that's a really dumb edge case, but <laughs> almost dead. Yeah, don't yeah, it, was, it happens. It was interesting, but yeah. Uh, anyway. Well, now we have multi stops, so you can get yeah. around a little easier. I love multi stops so much. Yeah, great feature. I'm glad. Uh, <laughs> this, um, yeah. I, I, yeah, just as we continue along here, I can't help but notice uh, lots more people walking out in the crosswalks and sitting behind trucks. And we went, we went around a truck that had the back open and a ramp down, and it was all sorts of amazing. Uh, so, very smooth. A lot less breaky. I, I remember, maybe it's just anecdotal, but I remember the first time I saw like a super solid, like unprotected left turn in the in the Pacificas, and I like yep. I actually said wow out loud. Like, and the I had an autonomous specialist uh, was there, and I, they were like, yep, <laughs> yeah, this is yep. A, uh, it's the real deal. Yeah, roundabout. All right, I couldn't even plan for that if I wanted to. Oh, I probably could, but so yeah, that, this is where I wanted to go. But I guess they uh, they're like, no, I probably don't, because it it forced a three point turn out of that parking uh, lot. So that that's God. why I thought it was a point of interest. But uh, makes sense. You're here. Not today. Please make sure it's clear before um, exiting. Oh. Vehicle approaching. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> it's like, hey, don't open the door yet. <laughs> don't worry, I have to. I haven't heard that sound before. I've I've heard I really love the sound design in these vehicles. Yes. Especially yep. the the you know the welcome track, all sorts of those like the sound that like I even use it as my video start sound. Yep. Like the the start ride sound. Yep. Because it's it's so like pleasing and well made. And, uh, I re I really liked the sound design. Uh, I was it I heard it was done by like one person even. Yep. All those like it's. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some incredibly talented people that work at Waymo. Yeah. Um, the sound design. I mean, I think this visualization. You know, mm -hmm. there's some things that are just striking. Um, I, I heard the music was done by one person. Not the rest of the sounds necessarily, but um, yeah. Anyway. I call it spa music. Spa music. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, I think my mom calls it that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I like it too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, didn't you put like a 10 minute like track of that up? I really like how you know that. <laughs> it makes me like, <laughs> that makes me happy. I mean, um, Joel, I gotta say, I work with a bunch of engineers and you know, from all of them, we thank you for all, all of you've done. I think we all really enjoy watching your videos. You know, during 2020, we were all stuck at home and yeah. Literally the whole team. Every time your videos came out, we'd watch them. Um, no way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's always it's always an interesting thing because it's like putting these videos out into the void, and usually the void doesn't talk back. But, right. The um, void doesn't. Yes. When but. you when you hear these little things of like, yeah, we're we're watching you, and then it's like, oh, that's that's really nice, you know, like. Uh, that's, oh yeah. That's that's yeah. really that makes me really really happy. Yes, um, we watch all your videos. Uh, <laughs> um, we've I have personally fixed bugs that you have mentioned in your videos before. <laughs> what? Yep. yep. Um, no way. That's oh, that's weird. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, it's you know it's also good to see. Yeah. It's nice to have so many videos out there just from the whole the whole point of view of the video the whole ride you know yeah. like not edited it's just like hey here's a bunch you know dozens and dozens and dozens of rides yeah um so when people say it doesn't work you can sort of just point um, and that yeah that was the exact that was the exact plan with the series was make as many and as long as 
humanly possible for one person. And uh, and yep. now I give all these people the information. I'm like, you know, hey, what what does this look like right yeah. now? Yeah. What what is this? You know, because I, I saw a huge lack of of those of those videos, and I was like, I really like to make videos. You know, it's arguable how good I am at it. I've gotten I know I've gotten better because the the later videos are a lot more fun to look at. Mm -hmm. um, but. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's it's see. been good seeing your setup improve yeah. over the over the years. <laughs> I got a you know, I got a three sixty camera for my birthday and then I got like an extra arm and one viewer suggested a clip on the screen and all kind all kinds of like overtime it slowly gets <laughs> um, but yeah. Let's see. Okay, for the last stop here, I swear I have better questions. Uh, That's all right. Like, you can save all your questions for Chris. I don't. Oh yeah, yeah. I only have I only have five for, for Chris. So. I but I hope you think of some more. Right. Yeah, I, I do have a little some notes here, so I'm gonna. Okay, now we're gonna actually make it back to where we started. So there, okay. there we go. Uh, now I can like actually pay attention Stop to the surroundings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. I was worried about how. This, though, like an all white screen would show up on camera, but I think it's okay. So, yeah, that's the. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, looks good to me. So. I can't wait to watch your video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna start off really weird. Uh, say, wait, where did my notes go? Oh no! Uh, okay, there we go. Cool. I just thought. So, you mentioned you, do you I, I can't stop thinking about that. Do you know, like, do you know which bug it was you fixed that I like? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's weird. Maybe that's not uh, knowledge I, what people should know about. But actually, I don't know. I'm just wondering. Um, um, this specific one was an app bug. Um, I think you recorded the screen and shit. Honestly, I don't remember what it was. Oh, okay, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, there was one where it's like you guys were getting ready to launch the music system, mm -hmm. and like if you go on the screen. And then if you're on a writer support call, then a music, the music pop-up will show up. Yep. And only if you're on a writer support call. I thought that was really interesting. Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, then the music system. Oh, that's what it is. What is it with Spotify? Uh-huh. Because I, I have complained to high heaven, and I know, I know uh -huh. that's probably really annoying. Uh, <laughs> but, like, like, I've tested some other music services and stuff. I... I'm guessing it's some thing that Spotify refuses to work with you guys on, and then it just like wasn't possible until. Because I was, I'm, I'm, I was like looking at the app, and I saw uh, that it's like Spotify is only in the fifth gen uh -huh. iPads. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. Like, what, what's, what's going on? There? Like, do you know what's going on there? Like, can you talk about it? Or is that like just? It's, it's probably really boring, actually. But it's pretty boring. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, Spotify. <laughs> Um, has some pretty technical DRM on their audio space. Oh, of course. <laughs> and I think the version of Android that we're running on the fourth gen platform uh, on the screen uh, doesn't get along with that. Okay. DRM. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know why I never even considered it's, that it would be running Android on that. <laughs> it, it's a pretty boring explanation, I know. But. It's always, it always comes down to DRM. It doesn't, it always, if something's broken, it's always DRM. Oh my goodness. Uh... Well, there you go. Mystery solved, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. So, da, da, da. Oh, yeah. So, since the... Is it, like more of a far future thing that uh do you anticipate that like chandler would be out uh like they'd wind down the pacificos and start bringing in the eye paces eventually or is it, like pretty happy with chandler is as it is or um well i will uh, say we are pretty yeah. happy with chandler in general right. I think, um the program there has been running really well smoothly i mean mm -hmm. you've been in a lot of cars like it's a yeah. full public service anyone can go ride in ro very good um, yeah. and we're proud of that uh, yeah, I think we're going to eventually expand the Jaguars down mm -hmm. into Chandler. Um,
I noticed then the eye paces started ramping up because, you know, I, again, everything I kind of picked up on is very, like, it could be true, it could not be true, just based on what I've seen. But it seems like the Pacifica's presence in the Chandler service area was dramatically reduced, like, a while ago as as the ramping up started in, like, San Francisco and that kind of thing. And it seems like you guys are moving on to bigger and better things, I guess. And I mean, I think our, in terms... We keep a close eye on service quality. Mm -hmm. um, I think in terms of running, you know, we want to offer a product to people that, yeah. you know, a good, safe way to get around. Um, and so we keep a good eye on um, ETAs, for example, right. in Chandler and make sure that in general, um, that the service quality is good and that people are happy with it. And so I think we found that, um, that you know, we could just good. rebalance a little bit and that yeah. we could still deliver a good, safe service in Chandler. Oh yeah, even, yeah. I mean, like, more specifically, I'm, I'm talking about like, uh, with autonomous specialists, and like other t just like driving around with the because I noticed there's there's the initial thing where it's like early rider is only time specialist and then 2019 he like introduced it and the, and introduced the the fully autonomous ones yep. and then COVID forced a shutdown and yep. then when he came back it was just all fully autonomous yep so yep and then it's like well we don't need these guys anymore <laughs> so or I guess I don't know it's a, you know again everything I'm like picking up on here is very like guess and check and whatever but. Um, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited to see the eye paces finally roll out, and I'm like sitting in one, and it's so exciting. <laughs> I think you'll yeah. see more and more eye paces yeah. around the way my paces. Um, the fifth gen driver, yeah, it's you know it's yeah. it's gonna be all over. Um, eventually, I hope. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, sure. I, I hope it will be all over the whole Phoenix metro area, but um, I yeah. think you'll certainly see the downtown service area expand and. Um, yeah. Eventually, you know, oh. we'll, we'll end up merging it. Yielding to emergency vehicle. That's cool. Really good uh, long vision distance there on that. That's it. I like how it, yeah, I saw the uh, hazard lights flip over. And, yep. Yeah, I'm always very impressed with emergency vehicle <laughs> detection. And especially, like, at night. Like, it's incredible. Like, yeah. even with, with uh, ones of, like, I don't know, I've seen ambulances that didn't even have their lights on, and it would still go ahead and highlight it on yep. the screen. Yep. Yeah. At, at night. It's yeah, like, sensor fusion. It's incredible. You got yeah. cameras, you have microphones, everything. Bring it all um, together. Yeah. Yeah. And but well, you said you'd like merge the service areas eventually and then Yeah, eventually. Kind of, or, okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. That's been a that's been a thing, I guess, is now we have we're coming up on having two public um, you know, like areas service areas now. So yep. like I guess the next step is like when can I go from my house in Chandler to like a spring training game? You know, kind of that kind of that kind of deal. Or where can I go from the airport all the way to some, you know, somewhere else in the, in the valley? Um, but I mean, yeah, I saw uh, I saw a Google self-driving car project. Um, uh oh, <laughs> uh, fourth gen tests car, like driving around my neighborhood, just kind of like 2016 and so then. Uh, I was kind of interested when they didn't uh, come to Chandler for the right hail, but it was, uh, you know, you talked about kind of what goes into that, so. Uh, this is interesting. We going in the parking lot here? Uh, I, ju I just gave it some addresses to go to, and then cool. I didn't actually specifically pick any um, spots, so it looks like it wants to go in the, this is a very interesting. Well, I guess I can say that's not what I would have done, but, um, oh, are we being, I can never tell, is it, is there any way that's obvious to the rider when a vehicle's being, uh, given pointers by the fleet response team, or is, is that supposed to be more of a seamless Connected to rider support. Thing? This call may um, be recorded for quality I assurance. Don't know, we'll talk about that later. Sir? <laughs> my name is... Waymo rider support, and I received notification that your ride is paused. Our road site assistance team is on the way. Please keep your seatbelt fastened and remain in the car unless there's an urgent need to exit. And remember to be mindful of the surrounding traffic if you do decide to exit. How are you doing? Um, very good, thank you. It does look like we have resumed for the time being, and it's just gonna run around and take a different way in, but uh, yeah, so I think we're okay. But okay, well, couldn't be sure yet. So it does look like that your ride is moving again. I'm, I'm glad to see that it's going. Okay. Well, if you don't have any further questions for me, was there anything else I can assist you with? Uh, I think we're good. 
All right. Have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Thank you again. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right. Ask me your question again. Yeah. Uh, so, is there? I think I. There's little telltale signs sometimes. Like I think that was a there was a fleet response move that looked to me because the 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 path became very short and there wasn't like any kind of uh, indication of like long term. So I've heard that it's been very obvious to me that the fleet response team cannot actually joy joystick right. drive the. Yep. There's been that's yeah like super super clear. I've heard. Can they give it like a like go over here, give it a point, or like uh, can they say I've heard they can give it pointers, but I've never heard like what specifically is involved with that. Is that yeah? Is that okay yeah, yeah. to like talk about? Or? Yeah. Um, so you're right. We there is no joysticking. You might say um, the car is fully autonomous. It's mm -hmm. driving itself in the world. Um, we as Waymo uh, humans at Waymo, we are not in any way driving the car. Um, right. Obviously, the Waymo driver is driving, but there is not a human involved. Um, the folks that you speak of, they do can offer advice. Mm -hmm. I like to call them like robot oh, advice. Yeah. That is not a uh, yeah, <laughs> sanctioned term. Not the um, official, but. Not at all, but uh, they are giving advice to the robot and, and sort of, um, you know, helping sometimes interpret a, a sticky situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes there's people, it's just hard, it's hard to drive around people because they're unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes we, it needs a little extra help. Yeah. Um, just with a little advice on how to handle a situation. So, yes. Yeah. So, and, and no, I noticed, um, I'm always, because I'm the nerd that always likes to, like, look out for when the vehicle's being given hints on yep. stuff. Yep. Um, that was, that was more obvious on the special screen that the, uh, the, the autonomous specialists yep. have. Yep. But, um, it doesn't seem like there's indicators of that here. And I guess that's trying, one person told me, well, not specifically about this, but, like, Bad people. I've heard people say like, try not to overwhelm riders with like information and that kind of thing. Or like, I'm wondering what like what goes into that because there's. I'd really like a. Personally, I'd want a verbose mode of like all kinds right. of. But you know, but yep. that's not to be. Uh, so I don't know. You're here. Is there, is there anything sure I can look out for? <laughs> um, there's not anything in the car right now that you can look out for to see when that's happening. Um, right. Yeah, I think you can see sometimes the um, trajectory change. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, like the hazards the, will turn on. Yeah, yeah, and um, that can be an indication, but um, you know, in general, it tends to be pretty transparent. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times, in my experience, because I've also been in the car um, with the autonomous specialist where you have a screen and you can sometimes see that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you don't really notice um, when you're sitting in the car. It's just like a small pause, or yeah. sometimes you don't, there's no pause at all. Um, yeah. The, the whole object is to be seamless there yeah I, I guess so yeah um, yeah that makes a lot of sense um, I think we're also always like in improving the capabilities of the car um, and trying you know every time that they that someone's attached we're trying to think about you know what's a way that we could do this fully autonomously without anybody involved right um, so we try not to talk too much about what's going on there because over time, you know, it's it's basically going to go away. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, have you seen the? Oh, now we're getting to the weird nitty gritty stuff, but it's like, uh, I guess like over yeah, over time, we expect the number of like support crew people to like change, uh, and hopefully get smaller, uh, right? But it's uh, has that been moving from the fourth gen to the fifth gen? Has it been like? Uh, like, wow, the behavior is so much better that we don't need X number of, you know, or just that just depends on how many, like, other factors or... Um, yeah, that's a I good guess. question. I think, I will say the fifth gen is remarkably good. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think in line with our safety framework, as we scale up more and more riding, I mean, that is what we're in the throes of doing right now is scaling up the service. Um, obviously, that's why we're opening a new service area in, in Chandler and, um, you know, we have a new vehicle coming, so... Yeah, I think all of those, uh, all of the improvements, huge number of improvements. This the whole sensor sure, system has been improved. You know, the software stack um, that's running on the car. Yeah. Um, it's just remarkable. We made a lot of uh, really great improvements to, you know, perception, planning, behavior, everything, um, behavior prediction. So, yeah, I think all of that, you know, um, all of that sort of adds together to make the car just generally work, you know, better, more effectively, and need less human intervention in general. Yeah. yeah. And that is the goal, you know, and this... We really like this platform. We we think it's going to grow pretty big, and um, 
so yeah, I think we're definitely trying to get um, you know to a place where the cars pretty much just drive themselves. Yeah. <laughs> entirely. Right. We're yeah. pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's pretty sweet. I did notice I had a couple of stops that I had where I think we were going to go over the time here, so I just um, we're just going back to the, the Rossi Museum now. Cool. Uh, yeah. yeah sounds so. good. Uh, which means we will get we should get a good little bit of. Uh, decent city traffic at the end there to finish it off because that was that was a really cool demo and I wasn't actually paying very close attention <laughs> to it because uh, <laughs> I was I was worried about the camera you know you can only spend so long planning this stuff but when you actually do it you know something always just doesn't work uh, but, uh, yeah so you, you know you're gonna have to perfect your setup for uh, <laughs> for this Jaguar I mean this looks pretty good so. yeah, I think it's pretty uh, good yeah. we'll, uh, we'll see I'm excited uh, to see um, what comes out uh, my thing is I always try to make sure that the screen camera like fits perfectly in the bottom right corner and I Because it, it's impossible to record something in a car without at least a little bit of shaking. So it's like You know, it's like uh, how like trying to stabilize that in Adobe Premiere and then the warp stabilizer is was not engineered to stabilize 35 minute videos uh, <laughs> You know, so it's it's been a challenge but uh, anyway we'll, uh, we'll work with it, but I mean, this is pretty steady anyway, so I don't think I'll even have to do that. I wonder if you could uh, cut your videos up into smaller segments and Oh, it. honestly, yeah. Oh, yeah, even, there's, there's been whole, all kinds of experimentation and stuff. That, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering if those guys were going to walk out in front. I was like, uh-oh. Uh, oh, yeah, it's like, the, I don't know, there's all kinds of weird editing stuff. And, anyway, I don't yeah. want to bore people with that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I figured I would, while we'd have this, I don't know if I showed this UI yet. That's that's new. Uh, this looks about the same. So like a, it's a casting thing, so that's good. Now I have my phone, I can actually try Spotify. Okay, yeah, this will be the end of a, a long series of, uh, is, does Spotify work? Does Spotify work? Does Spotify? I'm finally gonna do it, guys. You won't believe it. Uh, Anyway, ooh, wow. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just so smooth that I don't even just, there's like all kinds of stuff happening and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you almost forget uh, to watch the driving. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, oh, that, that's so impressive too. Cause I, you know, I've tried to like put gimmicks in my videos. I'm like, hey, let's take some senior citizens with, me. you know, and then it just like in the first three seconds, they're like already bored of it. And they're like, oh, whatever. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I found the same thing. I've taken people yeah. <laughs> in, you know, in Chandler and Rider Only Rise, and um, you know, I think the first three or four minutes, it's yeah. fascinating. It's delightful. You can't stop giggling. Okay. You take pictures. You take videos, and then next thing you know, you're like on Reddit on your phone because <laughs> you forgot <laughs> that the car was driving itself because it's boring. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like, oh man, yeah. My uh, my viewership retention is not great either on the on those videos, <laughs> those long but videos. that's the I'm like that hey, is kind of the point, right? I, I'm not I'm not here for retention, but hey, I'm like, dang guys, <laughs> like. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, it's it's remarkable. Uh, walk through. Okay, this is some nice copyright-free music. Um, see if I can get a cast going. Woo! Hello. There's a little bit of a. I didn't. I wasn't watching the steering wheel, but. Uh, are you signed in on your cast to the same account uh, as your I bet window? You. Let's see. Should be. I always wondered how I did Chromecast through like not Wi-Fi, but it's not. That's not Chromecast. It's something else. But it's like I'm like I, I don't know. All, this whole thing is black magic to me. It's like this is great. Um, actually, I kind of want to. play walk through wait no okay this is a pixel 3a it's really old it doesn't like to go past i have the same play problem. walk through the park by trap oh wait no you have the same you have a pixel 3A. i have a 3a as well yeah. oh, mine's blue though you did oh cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> play walk through the park by track drive on waymo Okay. Uh, uh, 
It's going. It is going. I'm gonna turn up the volume. Okay, that's it. There you go, guys. This is it. <laughs> it works. Ah, uh, finally, yeah. <laughs> We couldn't leave you hanging. Perfect. We had to do it. Love it. There was, uh, I don't know, did that guy try to change lanes in front of us and then like aborted at the last second? Or, I don't know, there's uh, all kinds of stuff going on here. The more I drive around, the more yeah. I think people are not good drivers. Nope. <laughs> we <laughs> really need more autonomous people. We really do. That's uh, Every day on my, you know, I take the 202, the 101, the 60, go up follow the Broadway curve and I'm like, dang it, I just want to be in the back of a Waymo right now. Yep, you know? yep. Uh, it yeah. is a remarkably safe feeling driver. Yeah, I, I gotta agree. Absolutely. <laughs> That's, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. And then I was, I was kind of wondering, uh, so there's, there's all kinds of stuff that's gonna happen. You know, as, as Waymo, the Waymo driver's driving around, you know, picking up data and doing stuff, like all kinds of weird stuff. Like when, when somebody told me about a time where there was a crossing guard walking down on the sidewalk with a stop sign uh -huh. on their back. Yep. And that just caused a little bit of, you know, so there's, there's all kinds of stuff that maybe you wouldn't get in the simulation. And I was wondering, like, maybe a couple of what the, what the weirdest things you maybe have seen or somebody else has totally. seen. Totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and how, like how you work through it. We've seen some pretty wild stuff. Um, a few years ago in Mountain View, we saw uh, somebody in a wheelchair chasing a duck, uh, <laughs> like wielding a, uh, a broom, like around in circles. Like literally we saw that, you can't make that kind of stuff up. Um, but all kinds of stuff, you know, we, we saw, um, recently we saw a bubble truck. It's like literally a truck that drives around and just like makes bubbles. Oh, but like wow. that's not something that we had ever thought to put in simulation. But the yeah. cool thing is, now that we have seen it with the Waymo driver, we can put it in simulation, <laughs> right? And then we can do some, you know, augmentation of the simulation and put that into more situations. So, yeah, um, that kind of thing. Uh, another thing that is tough to do in simulation is animals, mm. like animal doing animal things. You know, you like get right. horses walking around on the road. It's just not something that we um, had had in simulation. Um, yeah. Now we have it in the logs. Um, but other stuff too, you know, I think there's, there was a, a drunk guy on a bicycle weaving through traffic with a stop sign on his back. Oh my gosh. Uh, as strange yeah. as that is. That is, that's interesting. Oh, I, you guys are gonna have to stand by for a battery swap here. Uh, let's see, where's my... <laughs> okay. Wait, this little box here. Oh, oh yeah, there's um, I'm like, oh, a battery, so I'm like, what pocket did I put stuff in? I was gonna do it at a stoplight because that's the perfect time. To... Or if you have a USB C. Oh, yeah, I do, but it causes like a weird flicker on the side of the. Uh, I did plan to use the USB C ports, but I would say. I might just have to use that right now. Woo! Just give it a few extra minutes here. Oh, it's gone. Alright. Oh, shoot. Get in there. <laughs> Plug it in. Come on. Too late. Oh, sorry guys, that's um, that's embarrassing. I like tested this and it went for like, oh, this is the USB-A, I'm so silly. Oh, I, it went for like, like an hour and 10 minutes, so I thought I was in the clear, but no. All right, should have been checking that. Okay, there we go. Ooh. Okay, so we just did a right turn at a stoplight, and all right, we're back. Nice, good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> good, good. Anyway, I'm gonna continue to look for my batteries here. So. Um, one thing I will say about s those stop signs, yeah. for example, like um, we, we have also seen stop signs in a lot of situations, like there's, billboard ads oh, with stop signs on them. Especially. Um, and that's one thing where you're like, well, it's big and it's off the road. But yeah. you also can see, I've seen advertisements on the side of a bus with a stop sign in it. Oh, that's, goodness oh. me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of that sort of chaos out there um, waiting to trip you up. But the cool thing about the Waymo driver is that all of the sensor fusion that we're doing, 
makes understanding those situations a lot easier. Um, yeah. For example, like the LiDAR can tell how reflective a surface is. Um, oh, and so a camera, wow. a camera might see a stop sign, right? Uh, on the side of a bus, but the LiDAR might be able to tell like, well, it's not an actual stop sign because it's not very reflective. Yeah, um, that's because uh, I guess road signs are designed to be like reflect back. Exactly. Like, yep. Is that retro reflection or something? I forgot um, the exact name there, but that, that's really, that's a really interesting consideration. I didn't even. Yeah. I'd like. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's one of the reasons we have so many sensors on the car and why we do that sensor fusion is because you can, sometimes you need those hints to yeah. deduce what is actually going on. And you know, as a human, you got a lot of stuff in your mind, you understand things, you know, you're seeing, uh, you're seeing a lot of stuff, context. Like, a lot yeah. of context, but um, you know, as a robot, it's a little bit different. And you mm -hmm. need a few more hints, so more sensors help with that. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's, uh, I was, I'm going for a battery swap, but I realized we have like four minutes left, so I don't know, maybe it'll, cause the GoPro, when I plug it in, it just drains really slow. It doesn't actually stay in stasis there. So anyway, oh well. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Tried to make it pay. Yeah, at least you but... got this one here. Yeah, this is, I, I uh. Oh no, you're good. Uh, I guess Pakistan's calling. Oh. I don't, I don't think it's real. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that person wants to go pull out in front of, I don't know. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff going on here. Oh, so this is an interesting intersection where it's kind of like, you don't go straight there, you go like off to the side a little bit. Yeah, a little cattywampus. Yeah. Yep. It's, um, well, let's see. Oh yeah, with the stop signs, I remember the first time I was, um, went through a school zone, like a really active school zone in a, in the fourth gen uh, Pacifica. And there was, you know, crossing guard, walk out into the street and up oh, there it is. You know, there's a little stop sign indicator on the, and the amount of pedestrians it was tracking at the same time was just insane. Yeah. It was like 60, 70 people just walking in all different directions. Yep. It was incredible. Yep. Um, I, I don't think I got that on video. That was a, that was a private ride, um, uh, with some guests, but it was, it was really interesting. Um, and I, I guess I'm seeing now that, um, that stop sign indicator. It's not on this screen, is that, or I guess, is it sometimes, or is that just one thing that was decided, like, not really necessary? Yeah. Um, the stop sign indicator, I think you'll probably see it again. Okay. I guess, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, uh... Let's see if I can check my... Doo -doo -doo. It's like, these people gonna walk out in front? Yep. Cool. Yeah, even the, even when it has to break a lot, it still manages to make it smooth. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's smooth. It tends yeah. to be pretty gentle. Very gentle. Yeah. 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 When I've ridden in San Francisco, the what comes to mind, the thought that comes to mind is just so much more natural. Such mm -hmm. a natural driver, so smooth in the city, especially with pedestrians around. Yeah. Um, it's it's a little bit different like, than Chandler. Yeah, university campus and. All sorts of. You go to ASU. Yeah, I I have uh, I did a year there and then COVID and then I took a break to work. So like technically I might go back, but we'll see how it works out. But, got it. Got yeah, it. I I do like uh, Tempe campus a lot because uh, first there when I was first there it was really cool to see all like the all the people walking around the diversity and all all the kinds of it was a really great place to be. But yeah. almost to your drop off. Yeah. Check the app for walking directions. Oh. Yeah, that reminds me of this voice. Yes. I've heard in interviews <laughs> that it was like designed to be like the most calming that it could be. With like, <laughs> um, but I also noticed uh, Google WaveNet is like I guess that's like a API for like um, like speech to check no uh, text to speech like stuff that people can like use in Google stuff. I, I don't know all the details, but somehow like this voice ended up on their demo page. Uh -huh. uh, it's like voice F on the demo page. I'm like, mm -hmm. so which came first? Did like Google make their voice and then Waymo adopted it? Or did Waymo's research make that? And then Google was like, oh, we're gonna take this. That's a great like, question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, it is, I, I actually don't know if it's WaveNet. I think that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I, I know that we worked with Google on the voice hmm. stuff for sure, so that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Interesting. Um, you should try it in Spanish sometime. That's got a great Spanish, oh. Spanish accent. I didn't even think about that. Oh yeah. 
that's um man can you you can do it in spanish i didn't know <laughs> uh i i guess is there a language setting in the app or something that's that's interesting um uh, it's actually based on the language that your oh, phone is using right yeah. that makes sense yeah. that's yep. So everything's good. Oh, okay. I guess I gotta try that sometime. You're here. <laughs> Please make sure it's clear before exiting. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us today uh, in the iPace. There might be more of these. There might not. We'll see what happens. But it has been really cool. Thanks for joining me. Or, well, thank you for inviting me, rather. That's, Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Nice to meet you. What am I talking about? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. All right. See you guys in part two.